It's been another bad week for the COVID cult. Always got to be careful how I say that word. As the Telegraph report that health officials are admitting the nine tragic child deaths from strep A, which is a bacterial infection, is directly linked to COVID lockdowns, during which young people were unable to go to school and be exposed to such infections and fight them. Meanwhile, the globally renowned British Medical Journals published a paper suggesting COVID-19 boosters are likely to cause a net clinical harm to young adults aged 18 to 29 where total severe adverse events will outweigh COVID hospitalizations averted. Put bluntly, according to this paper, young people are far more likely to be harmed from the vaccine than from getting COVID. Based on these findings, uh, to avoid uh, young adults going into hospitalization from COVID, you'd have to vaccinate 31,000 people, 18 of whom would suffer vaccine side effects. Not a ringing endorsement, is it? Meanwhile, with even the most brainwashed Brits now discarding face masks, and with most accepting the NHS waiting list of 7 million patients is down to a policy of lockdowns that barely move the COVID dial, is the COVID narrative beginning to crumble? Uh, let's now speak to Ivor Cummins, a man who's made quite a name for himself during the pandemic. Uh, he's on YouTube, he's on Twitter, and he is the voice of reason. Uh, you can just skip ahead for me if you don't mind, Leila. Thank you so much. Chemical engineer and complex problem-solving analyst. It is Ivor Cummins. Hi, Ivor. Hey there, Mark. Great to be here. Uh, great to have you back on the show. It's been far too long since we last spoke. Um, it's a bad week of headlines for COVID. Do you think people are beginning to wake up now? Yeah, I mean, I'm feeling pleasantly vindicated over the past six months as all the data has come in and Sweden with no lockdowns, no masks and kids up to 16 in school throughout had one of the lowest mortality excesses in Europe. And that in itself is a case in point of proof. Uh, and of course, we have nearly 100 papers published now showing that lockdown has no measurable benefit in COVID outcomes. And of course, we have 40 years of science and we have the Dan Mass study on COVID for masks showing no benefit, which is unsurprising. So, you know, things are turning around. However, the mass media, sadly, is still pumping out propaganda for whatever reason we won't get into conspiracy theorists. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, people are waking up because common sense is finally beginning to cut through the mass propaganda and indoctrination of the last couple of years. Um, I know so many people that are up to date with the uh, vaccines and with the boosters, they're still getting COVID. I can't believe it, Ivor. It's quite shocking. I had so much hope for that novel drug class, but sadly, it kind of failed. The most important thing was to prevent or to reduce transmission. And sadly, in the summer of 2021, the Israel data from the government in Israel clearly showed that the infection rates were very similar between the vaccinated and non-vaccinated, and they did massive vaccination. So we did know mid-summer 2021, pretty much, that there was no real mitigation of transmission that was worthy of real-world respect. So once we knew that, whether it helped you with your own personal health, that is not really relevant to people below 50 who are healthy because the risks are so stunningly small uh, to that cohort that really there would be no need for a novel drug medication to try and allay that risk. So, I mean, it's all coming out now clear as day. Uh, yes, I mean, Ivor, do you buy the idea, the narrative that the virus is less of a threat to societies because so many of us are vaccinated. All those celebrities that go on Twitter, they say, I've, I've got COVID for the 10th time, but thank God I've had the booster, otherwise I'd be in the ICU now. Do you buy that argument that COVID's less of a threat because of the vaccine? Well, I mean, I, my phrase has always been for 20 years, show me the data, and the data says the exact opposite of that. So in reality, we had COVID, which was a new member of the coronavirus family, or SARS-CoV-2. And we had a first hit that was pretty heavy because there wasn't a whole lot of prior immunity. And then we had a kind of second wave. But obviously, the impact of this new virus was going to rapidly diminish. I likened it in early 2020 to a stone being skipped on a pond you're gonna get hit seasonally and it's gonna rapidly diminish as human immunity in the population grows remarkably. So the vaccine came in, but when you look at the actual data, 
it's hard to distinguish an effect from the vaccine. And that's just what the data says. So blaming or crediting the vaccine is just inappropriate because these people who are claiming credit, at the end of the day, they were in a profile where the risk was to have a flu-like effect. And that's what they had. So I'm not sure where the vaccine comes into it. Uh, Ivor's YouTube channel and his podcast are unmissable, as is his Twitter feed. You can find him at The Fat Emperor on all of those platforms. Thanks, Ivor. Catch up soon.